What's up, everyone? This chapter takes place in the quote original timeline, or universes 12, 14, and 15, and was created by Amaru Industries, Phonitis, and Saliger. And new member shout out to Steven Cesarski. Landing on Earth, the Frost Demons find themselves one step closer to getting their revenge. King Cold questions his son if he really wants to wait for the Super Saiyan, as it's going to take at least another three hours. But the sadistic Frieza chorts, of course he does. And while they wait, they can kill all his little human friends before he arrives. Not far away, Vegeta must confess something to our heroes. This is undoubtedly the end of their planet. When the Emperor commands his underlings go span out and kill all Earthlings. Spotting his henchmen flying overhead, Piccolo calls out the invasion has begun. The prince only scoffing how typical it is for the tyrant to send his grunts to do all the legwork. Regardless, they have to find a way to stop Frieza's army, all while using as little energy as possible as to not draw attention. The Z fighters zipping into action. Only Bulma, Puar, and Vegeta remain. Venturing far to the north, a few soldiers spot a town at last. As one is struck by what appears to be a large rock. Below, Krillin and Gohan stand before him, ready to defend all nearby innocents. Though underestimating the pair, the apparent leader taunts. Well, well, what do we have here? To the west, one henchman questions what the average power of a human is, the other merely sighing. Very low. Oh! And to the south. What's happening? I'm not detecting anybody. Finally, the east. A few land in the middle of a crowded area, but Yamcha arrives at the same time. But even while being heroic, he manages to pull a… him. Exerting himself a bit too much, Gohan senses his power. Vegeta fuming that idiot just blew their element of surprise. Bulma brings up a fair point, and at least he's doing something. Reporting back to his master, a soldier alerts they've lost touch with all forces. They've all simply vanished, noting they spotted powers of over 5,000, but only popping up on the scouter for a very short moment. Knowing they've been found out, Tien and Piccolo rush back, the Namekian volunteering to hold him off as long as he can, apparently learning nothing in his death against the Saiyans, urging Tien to regroup with the others and not make his presence known. The Frost Demons rise into the air, as Frieza is aghast to see Piccolo here. All the Z Fighters together as planned, Tien is furious Piccolo is going to be the one to pay for their screw-up, as something else catches Gohan's attention. Goku! His father is returning home! Frieza telling this to Piccolo, and the Namek telepathically relaying it to the boy. Krillin excitedly spouting this changes everything. Now they only need to hold out long enough for him to arrive. Yeah! Predictably overpowering Piccolo with ease, Frieza goes to deliver the finishing blow, when Gohan screams for his mentor, but showcasing the same result. The tyrant growls the pair can die together. When Goku arrives, commanding Frieza stop. Amazed to see his adversary on this world so soon, the Saiyan taunts he attack him first, if he dares. Not hesitating to do so. The Emperor barks Goku is no match for him anymore. His father believing he's dead already. Frieza knows there's no way a single blast would be enough. Tightening his hold on Gohan, screaming for Earth Zero to show himself, or he'll start the slaughter by killing this child. Bastard! Yamcha of all fighters charges the invader, with tears in his eyes. Though his foe is able to dodge, this causes him to release his hold on Gohan. Reaching out, he calls out once more for Goku to show himself, if he's not here on the count of three. Interrupting, Gohan coughs Frieza must really be stupid, as that wasn't his father he just saw, it was their shape-shifting friend Puar, and that attack undoubtedly did kill him. Not believing the kid, the demon screams he's lying, and he will kill them all. A beam coming out of nowhere, stopping Frieza in his tracks. Even King Cold wonders who that could have been. This time, the real Goku. His friends surrounding him with elation. He apologizes for being late, feeling they were managing quite well for themselves at first, so he wasn't sure if he should step in or not. But not everyone is happy to see him. The Space Lord growling at him, a miss how he managed to get here so soon. At any rate, he can still deliver on that desolation he promised, but not willing to let happen to Earth what he did to Namek. 
resurrection effing Frieza. Goku kills him with a single Kamehameha. Vegeta most surprised at this. Stepping towards the action. Tien isn't having any of his cowardice, calling him out for only showing up when the battle is already over. Though the prince sees things differently, confused why any of them would expect him to throw his life away, fighting alongside weaklings, knowing there is no chance at victory without Kakarot here, adding he's not willing to die before defeating the legendary Super Saiyan himself. While this chatter ensues, Cold begins to look a little off. Goku calls out to him, informing he has nothing against him, only Frieza and he'd be best to get back in his ship and forget about this planet and its inhabitants. Powering up and shouting that isn't going to happen. Cold takes on his assault form. Vegeta grunting in terror, what a fool Kakarot is, who only stares on in silence. Even though being knocked to the ground, Gohan proclaims his faith in his father, sensing he's much stronger than he was on Namek which may be the case, but he still appears to be struggling early on. Krillin and Piccolo feeling pessimistic, knowing here and now, this monster is stronger than Goku, and he still has one more transformation up his sleeve in case this isn't enough. Tien baffled how a single being could house this much energy. pinning Goku to the ground and relieving him of his Super Saiyan form. Cold gazes down at his foe, laughing how pathetic he is. We have to help him! Earth Zero's powerless against the might of the Frost Demon, when one of its villains screams this pitiful excuse for a king is going to die at the hands of a Saiyan, just like his feeble son. Knowing he doesn't have the power to destroy Cold, but he won't be able to escape this planet's explosion. Krillin shouts that's even worse than outright losing to the invader. Easily deflecting the blast, Vegeta can't believe he sent it back without breaking a sweat. Panning again to Krillin, he can't believe the irony of King Cold saving the Earth. Furious with the prince. Piccolo realizes that last attack may have actually scared him, gaining hope they can take him down, asking if he remembers their fight against Raditz, which causes Goku to let out a smirk, only hoping this time it ends a little more in his favor. Without having to say anything further, he agrees to buy the Namek a little time, who adds he will idiotically yell like Vegeta did, so Cold shouldn't see it coming. Powering back up, this fight isn't over. Angrily asking if Goku just plans to keep running away, he mocks our hero, questioning if he really thought he wouldn't notice his friend with his fingers to his head charging an attack. But it's actually Tien he's referring to. Blocking the technique, he chorts. Was that supposed to? Huh? <laughs> Managing to stave off Piccolo, the king grits his teeth through the pain, Goku once again commanding he leave, as it's clear he's lost this fight. Staggering towards him, Cold stutters he will never retreat, not until he kills every last one of them. Arguing he's no longer in a position to threaten anyone, Goku insists he should consider himself lucky to be alive. You're so naive, Kakarot! taking his opportunity to blast the king head on. This time, Vegeta succeeds, reiterating what he shouted before, death at the hands of a Saiyan. Condemning the prince for his actions, Piccolo has to actually stand up for Vegeta on this one, agreeing he indeed can be quite naive. Even Yamcha on his side. After all, he probably would just come back mechanized and ready for revenge. But no matter how many choose to side with logic, Gohan is merely happy to have his father back embracing him and joyfully expressing how much he and Chi Chi missed him. Remembering his wife is a thing, he resolves to head home, putting his fingers to his forehead about to show off instant transmission for the first time. Bulma comes barreling towards him, screaming to know what took him so long to get here. She demands he explain everything this instant, who promises to do so just as soon as she stops yelling. And while he may not have been the MVP in the fight against Cold, Goku nonetheless arrives yet again at the very last moment saving his friends. But how many more times would he manage to do so?